Welcome to the Kapow Radio Show and to Why This Verse is Awesome with your host, Paul Kapow. Each episode presents specific Bible verses which are examined to unleash the reasons why those verses are so awesome. Join me in surveying and exploring the characteristics that make those verses so meaningful in our lives. Today's awesome verse, what makes this verse awesome, is in Daniel chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. Now this is the story of the three young men that we know as Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel's buddies. And the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, had set up a golden image to be worshipped. And when certain music played and certain sounds were made by the musicians, everybody was commanded to bow down and worship this golden image, which was probably an image of him based on his previous dream in chapter two. Well, these three young men, these exiles from Israel, taken captive by a Babylonian tyrant or a king and put in his servants or service as servants. Well, these three guys, well, they weren't going to bow down to an image because it was against not their religion. It wasn't their religion. It was against who they knew Yahweh was. And it was against the relationship they had with Yahweh, with their God. If it was purely religion, certainly you could fudge a little bit. You can make things work so not to anger a king like Nebuchadnezzar, who has the power to kill you, totally destroy you from the face of the earth and everything associated with you. A religion certainly would give pause to this kind of a thing when it comes down to it. But like the martyrs and, you know, written about in Fox's books of the martyrs and um, in the book of fourth of Maccabees and things like that, you can see people, of course, the, the New Testament, Paul and um Stephen, people who who were killed, who lost everything in this temporary life, based not on a religion, not on a religion, but based on who their God was to them. They knew their God, and their God knew them. This is something that the rest of the world can know nothing of. Religion could know nothing of this. So these three young men are told to bow down when the music starts. And in verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar, he speaks to them and he says, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Verse 15, now if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the sultry, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, You shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So we go to verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, 
We are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And if he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, yes, if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image, which you have set up. Here's why this verse, these verses are so awesome, because this separates the men from the boys. This separates the real followers of Yahweh, those who know him and those who are known by him from the rest. Like I said, this isn't ritualistic religion. This isn't do's or those or thou, you know, don'ts, do's or don'ts. Uh, These and thou's and rituals. This is a relationship that comes deep from knowing that you have been chosen by God to be his servant and his son and a joint heir with his Messiah. This is a confidence that comes from this. And in the Old Testament, this is before our Messiah, Jesus Christ. This is the relationship that Yahweh had with his certain people. And what we have here in verse 16 is that these three young men say, you know, we're not careful to answer thee. Well, really, the, the translation is kind of lacking there. It's it's more like we have no need to answer you. We, we're, we're not going to argue this. Um, you're determined on your side. And, and we're determined on our side. Our mind is made up. We're not going to worship the image or other gods. We're just not going to do that. What they're saying, there's there's no use in arguing as if we could be shaken from our principles, as, as if we could be shaken from our very knowledge of who our God is and that we know that he knows who we are. That's That's something that goes much deeper, people much deeper than so many realize. So many fail to understand that depth of relationship. There was no hesitation on their part. There there was no uh, messing with with the sin or messing with the the disobedient uh, act that goes against the command, the word of God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That hesitation, if one were to say, well, if, if, if it's my religion, but you know, how, how am I going to continue my religion if, if they kill me? So I, I think God will understand if I just, right? It's fatal. The unhesitating decision is the only safety. That's that's the path that has to be clear. And in verse 17, this is this is incredible because they say, if it be so, okay, that you that you kill us. Because because remember, this is this is Nebuchadnezzar. This is we don't know anything about these kings. We don't know anything about what that would be like to, to, in, in the awesome presence of, of a king of the earth like that. I mean, man, I mean, they, they were all powerful. They were all powerful people. And they say, if it be so, our God whom we serve, that now that's Yahweh, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And then they say something very interesting. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Because in verse 18, they say, but if he doesn't, if if, if he doesn't, first they say he's 
Our God is able to deliver us from the, the furnace and out of your hand. Because you remember, he said, what God can deliver you out of your hand? There's nothing. I'm the king of the earth. I'm all powerful. And they say he could del- he's able to do this. But he says, but at 18, but if not, if not, if he doesn't deliver us from the furnace or from your hand, they say, you've got to know this. We will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. He's able to deliver us, but if he doesn't, we're still not going to serve your gods. Folks, that comes from a deep, deep relationship and trust and your deity. Our God is able to deliver us. Now, that's a direct challenge to Nebuchadnezzar's statement. Who is that God that shall deliver you? Who, 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 you who? And they say, and he will deliver us either by death or in death. Let me repeat this to you. God would deliver them either from death or in in death. You, you understand? He will, they trusted, literally deliver us, but certainly he will do so spiritually. One thing I noticed, well, I noticed a lot of things, but a big thing I noticed when, when COVID-19 hit, when the coronavirus hit, what I noticed is the fear of death caused this Worldwide panic. People were afraid of death. They did everything in their power not to die. Not to die. I'm not talking just pagans and heathens and non believers. I'm talking the Christian church. I'm talking Christian religious people. And they did everything in their power. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And they had no concept that whether God delivered them physically from Corona, from death, or if they del- or God delivered them in death, it didn't matter because God is your father. That's your Elohim. That's your deity. The relationship wasn't dictated whether you're down here or not, whether you died of Corona or not. That had nothing to do with the bigger picture. Many people do not understand that. They don't get it. They can't grasp it. I find that sad. I find that a very sad because there's a lack of understanding who God is. And there is a very low view of God in our Christian religion. Oh yeah. When you see no present advantage, you must walk by faith and not by sight. And that faith is trust in who your God is. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver from the burning furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand one way or another one way or another their deliverance from this compliance of worshiping an idol was as great a miracle in the kingdom of grace as that from the furnace was in the kingdom of nature you understand their youth their position as captives as exiles before an absolute king of the earth and they're facing this horrid death but they they persevered in their knowledge of who God was to them and that God knew who they were 
all these all all these things they enhanced the grace of God and it carried them through such an ordeal. We, you know, we read later on, sure, there was a fourth man in that barbecue. Right? The king looks at it, he goes, Man, they're unharmed. Who's that? Who's that image of a of a man? It looks like a son of man walking with them. And and not even their clothes smelled of smoke. The furnace was heated so hot, seven times hotter that the people the, the men who threw them in all died. But that's not what this is about. What's about is their trust in God, whether he delivers us or not. I know he's able to, but whether he answers that prayer in that specific way or not is not what I'm trusting in. I'm trusting that he will deliver us from your hand, O king, either from death or in death. But you cannot chase us into the afterlife. You cannot chase us after our spirit leaves our body and do us harm. Only God, only Yahweh can destroy both the body and the soul. You've got to remember that. So this fear that overtook the world in 2020, this fear of this virus revealed so much lack of trust in God. You expect it from the world, but you don't expect it from Christianity. But it's there. And they're scared to die and they don't want to die. They don't want to leave this place. They're hooked into this place. They have things to do here. You see, with these three guys, with these three young men, their service of God was not mercenary in its motive. It wasn't, well, you know, what, what, what can he do for us here? And we got to do this and that. And it wasn't religion. Because God, though God himself slay them, they will still trust in him in that. Because they know of the relationship with him and that he knows them. And that is what makes this verse awesome. And that concludes this episode of why this verse is awesome. If you have a favorite verse that you know is awesome for your life, please email me, paul at kapowradioshow.com. Give me a description and I'll read it on the show. You may also email me a short audio file if you wish. Thank you. And until next time, God bless. Recently, spiritual attacks on innocent people have increased considerably. This is partly due to society's transformation into a satanic cult. Most people are clueless or hopeless in combating this spiritual mayhem. We wish to offer two good books to overcome these attacks. First, Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, offers one of the most effective training systems in combating spiritual darkness in order to gain personal freedom. Second, Eyes to See Unseen Enemies teaches how to see the hidden dangers which are all around us, even in places we would least expect them. Both books can be purchased on Amazon.com as a paperback or ebook. It is our desire that you will take advantage of these opportunities to increase your effectiveness in spiritual warfare and learn how to fight back instead of being a victim. We'll see you on the battlefield.